Alright, today we're going to talk about the tone stack of the Big Muff Pie circuit. It's pretty ingenious. It's a very simple circuit. It doesn't contain very many parts, just one potentiometer, and really just two resistors and two capacitors. What we have is we have a signal that's coming out of our gain stages and our clipping stages, and it goes into the tone stack. What we have, though, is we have two filters going on within this tone stack. We have a high-pass filter where the signal comes up this way and goes through this capacitor here and then this resistor to ground. And then we have the low-pass filter, which is going from here, going into this resistor and going down this capacitor to ground. In the center here, we're mixing them together and then we're spitting them out. And then we have a decoupling capacitor, but we're not going to really equate that as part of the tone stack. So what do we have again? Well, we have this high pass filter. So what's a high pass filter? It means high frequency signals will pass through where low frequency signals are going to get cut. And then we have right here a low pass filter where we say low frequencies will pass, but high frequencies will be cut. And with the tone knob in here, uh, basically teeter-tottering between the two, it's saying we're going to do more of a low pass filter than a high pass or more of a high pass filter than a low pass. And then that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at some of the math that's going on here real quick. So here we have an example of the tone stack math for the Big Muff Pi. In this case we're using the parts out of the Green Russian Big Muff. So we're using their resistors, their capacitors. The math to determine where the cut frequency is at is the same for uh, the high pass and the low pass filter. So you can kind of see that the equation are the same. It's just which capacitor and resistor are you pulling, which we showed on the previous schematic. So on the Russian Big Muff, we get a 663 hertz low cut. And then on the high cut, we get a 1.8-ish kilohertz cut. Now, if you take a look down here, you can kind of get an illustration of how that works. You have the low pass filter dropping off here, where the uh, 663 hertz starts to drop it. And then on the high pass, we have where the uh, 1.8 kilohertz is at, where it starts to drop it. And then you have a little intersection here where the two frequencies uh, meet up. So if you were to really actually illustrate it, you'd just basically cut out that spot where they meet up, and you get this big dip in the center. That's where you get this mids cut that you see a lot with big muffs. Now this is nice, but let's actually get a little bit more into what the sound of it is. And then we'll go from there. Because this guy moves around as you're turning that knob and we want to hear that. So let's actually get an audible example. Alright, so here we have a big muff circuit. Uh, this is the DBE Siberian. Let's uh, get a sample of our clean. Right now we'll have the tone knob set to about noon, and we'll engage. Let's turn the tone all the way down to a one. Let's turn the tone knob all the way up to the max. And let's go through the full sweep. We'll start her all the way back down at a at a one. We'll just strum through a chord.
Okay, so now that we've heard the sweep and we've seen the math, let's actually do some modeling with the tone knob here and see what it looks like. Uh, we have a software package here. It's called uh, Tone Stack Calculator. It's by Duncan Amps. It's free. It's a uh, small, it's a pretty good program. I'll provide a link in the description below. What we're going to use it for is uh, we're going to select the Big Muff tab and we're going to analyze the tone stack a little. So right here we have the default uh, Big Muff Pie, New York City Classic style tone stack here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first we're going to do a sweep here. So if I take the tone knob and drop it down to a 1, remember from the sound, uh, samples earlier, that we had with, this, with the uh, tone knob all the way down, we had a lot of woofiness, a lot of bass. And you can see that right here. A lot of the bass frequencies are in here, and a lot of the trebles were cut out as we brought it back up to the middle at noon you can see that we have decent bass we have a scooped mid and we have the trouble coming in here you can see that there's that low pass filter that we saw from the math example here's that high pass filter that was in that math example and here's where they meet in the middle where the scooped mids are now this is something that is kind of a signature of the big muff pie tone stack it is the scooped mids and as you can see with the new york city classic one the scoop uh, dips down here in the one kilohertz range, which though that sounds kind of nice from a heavy metal or a fuzz type sound, it really stinks in a mix because this is kind of the frequencies you want to push up when it comes to trying to get your guitar tracks to cut in the mix. Now, of course, engineers will play with the EQs and kind of fix that for you, but the pedal by itself doesn't really lend to that. But as you can see, the, the shifting of this moves as we move the sweep. So like when we were turning the tone knob all the way up to high, to a 10, you can see that we have a lot of the bass cut out and a lot of the highs uh, taking over. So let's take a, a few examples of other Big Muff Pie tone stacks here. So first thing we'll do is let's take a look at the uh, Green Russian. The Green Russian is not too much different than the uh, regular Big Muff Pie tone stack. So the values I'm going to change here are, let's see, C2. We're going to change that from 10 nanofarad to 12 nanofarad. And as you can see, when I did this, the uh, dip moved behind the, the 1 kilohertz mark and got down a little lower. Uh, I think that went down a little lower. We'll take a look here uh, later. And R22, that stays the same, but R1 Let's move you over here. That's going to change to 20K. So we're going to lower the value of R1, and you're going to watch that it shifts the waveform drastically. Now we've pushed the waveform forward some. The scoop is not as pronounced, which that's kind of nice, uh, but it also is letting in a lot more bass and even some of the treble frequencies. We can definitely see that when we go all the way over here to rolling it all the way to low, to 1. A lot of bass frequencies are in, and we don't really see even too much of a cut until we get into the higher hundreds of hertz, uh, getting close to the one kilohertz, and then a dramatic drop to the high frequencies. Conversely, if we go with the knob all the way up to 10, we got a lot of bass cut, but not as much as we did with the classic. Uh, but we do have a lot of troubles coming in, but the troubles seem to be coming in a little bit higher up. So. Decent uh, decent all-around tone sweep there. Let's take a look at the op-amp version of the Big Muff Pie. The op-amp one's got some really different values here. So for C1, we're going to put in 100 nanofarad for C. And you can see that kind of caused a bump. So that's an interesting, unique move. Let's take a look here. C2 is 120 nanofarad. Then, let's see, R1 goes to... 5.6k. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. This thing is not like capitals. 5.6k. And then uh, R2 is 1.2k. So here we have kind of a, well, we have the, the scooped mids, but the scooped mids is uh, a little bit more pushed back. Uh, if we go all the way down to the to rolling it down to a one on the tone knob, we get a lot of bass, but it seems to be like all the bass from like the 100 hertz back. Uh, we start to see a drop here in the 
what I like to call the mud section, but not dropped enough. But man, does it kill off the highs. So this one's got a wide sweep there. And conversely, it goes the other way too. So let me uh, take the op amp Big Muff Pies uh, tone knob and roll it up to a 10. Uh, we scoop out a ton of the bass and we have a lot of the treble coming in, which is why the op amp Big Muff has that real shrill sound to it when you turn that tone knob up. It's because of this tone stack, uh, amongst the uh, other parts of that circuit as well, but that tone stack is definitely not helping it any. So let's set this back to uh, middle here. Let's uh, try doing something here, a modification you may want to do to something that has a Big Muff uh, tone stack. Uh, flattening out the mids because like I was saying earlier scooping the mids not such a good thing when you're trying to when you're trying to get it to cut in the mix so let's set uh, both of the capacitors to 10 nanofarad and then let's set the oops, let's set the uh, R1 here to yeah, the regular 39k and set R2 to 2k. Now you can see right here, now when we have the tone knob in the center here, we have a very flat cut here. I mean, there's a scoop in the mids, yeah, but barely. Uh, that would That's going to be a lot easier to play with in a mix than anything else. But as we move it around, we still get a decent sweep. As you can see, it's still, uh, when it's rolled down to a 1, we got a lot of bass and the treble is cut out uh, right around that kilohertz mark. And conversely, if we go the other direction, we lose a lot of bass, but not terribly too much. Uh, but we do bring in a lot of the treble frequencies uh, around the 1 kilohertz mark. So that's pretty good. We can do uh, one up even better. We can actually bump the mids. All I'm going to do is I'm going to change C2 right here from 10 nanofarad to 5.6 nanofarad. Okay, that did not take 5.6N. And see right there, we got a little bit of a bump, as opposed to a dip. We still have the sweep that we are looking for before, but now we have a bump. Although the bump did move a little bit behind the 1 kilohertz mark. We can also increase that even further. We can go with a 1 nanofarad capacitor, and now we get a tremendous bump. And then we still have our sweep, which is pretty nice. So this is just some options that you can play with here with this tool. I found this tool really valuable because you can really kind of get in there and come up with some cool designs and sweeps. One thing I'm going to also show you here, uh, I'm going to set this back to the New York Classic Standard. Uh, you can do things such as uh, doing a sweep. Uh, let's clear that out. If you set your plot to cycle colors automatically, if you do a sweep this way, now you can do like a compare contrast and if you want to go okay so here's the sweep of the classic and then here's the uh, tone knob at the center uh, what's what's the difference between like the classic versus say the the green Russian well I could go in here I can change the uh, this resistor here to 20k and I can change this capacitor here to 12 nanofarad and now you can see that I got a different uh, sweep here with the tone knob in the middle and I can play around with that if I have to to kind of see hey where's this gonna go so now you can compare two sets of tone stacks uh, within the simulation which is kinda cool uh, another thing you can do here too that I didn't really go over is I, I showed you you can obviously change the resistor values and you can change the uh, the capacitor values you can also change the uh, generator source resistance uh, for like if you're trying to do like input impedance versus output impedance um, I usually don't play with that too much as far as tone stacks are concerned uh, at least not passive ones which this is if you notice by the way uh, none of the frequencies go above 0 dB the way this tone stack works is it's a passive low pass and high pass filter type so everything is being cut there's no boosting being done, just cutting and not cutting as much. So there's that. Um, but one thing I do mess with from time to time is the actual potentiometer. The potentiometer value, its resistance value, is typically 100K in this case, but we can change the sweep from what would be a logarithmic or a anti-logarithmic potentiometer, which is kind of nice too. But anyways, 
just wanted to go over this tool here and kind of give you a visual uh, as opposed to just the audio and the math that way you kind of see as well as hear what the differences are with the tone stack and how to change it and what things affect what anyways I hope this helps this will kind of give you an idea of what you can do when you see a pedal that has this style of tone stack which by the way is not something that you just find on Big Muff Pies you can find this on other style of pedals or if you're building a pedal or manipulating one you can add this tone stack to a pedal you can put it on other dirt pedals if you want you can put it on non dirt pedals like coarse pedals or flangers or vibrato or heck you can even put it on an envelope filter which is a moving tone stack on its own right so that's kind of a a tone stack on a tone stack but anyways that's to go to show you you can use this on on anything and this tool right here this tone stack calculator is pretty helpful when you're trying to visualize some things and see hey what happens when I change this or that so anyways I hope this helps if you like these kind of videos press that like button and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe and if you wish to support us just visit our website which is www diyguitarpedals.com.au and just purchase a, a PCB kit or two. It'll be a real nice Christmas present at this time of the year. Anyways, thanks for watching. Cheers.